point? Well, I, I think it certainly will. Uh, first off, Deutsche Bank is admitting guilt. Mm -hmm. This is the first time for any of these, uh, any of these fined companies to admit guilt. They're paying a $5 billion fine and they're becoming, uh, state's evidence. In other words, they're going to squeal on, on other, uh, others that were involved. As I understand it, this was about the fix. This was not about daily trading. So it just gets into the fix. My belief is you're going to see all the sorts of civil class action suits going to be brought against Deutsche Bank and the others over manipulation. And the fact that they admitted guilt it's slam dunk automatic win for class action suits. Mm -hmm. The danger to Deutsche Bank, the danger to the cabal is discovery. When discovery, once discovery begins and they've got to open up their books, their emails, etc., this ought to be comical. It's strange that this news came out the same time that China's launching their gold back yuan? Uh, no, I don't. I, I think there's a whole, and I'll give you a list in a little bit, there's a whole list of stuff that's come out just over the last two weeks. This is all coming to a head. Uh, today, the 19th, this has been a day uh, precious metal people have been waiting for because the, the uh, China has begun their uh, their gold fix away from London, and also the ABX exchange has opened up. Uh, my my thought on this is that, and, and I wrote this last week, the last couple of weeks, I don't believe this was going to be like a light switch. I think it's going to be like several candles or candle after candle being lit, and then all of a sudden the light switch goes on. What I think you're going to see happen is the physical demand from Asia is going to going to push the price of gold and silver higher and they're going to they're going to more or less force Comex to come along. If Comex does not come along and recognize the demand, then they're going to be arbitraged completely out of inventory. And with a billion dollars, more or less a billion dollars, you could clean up both uh Comex silver and gold that they have available to deliver. So it's not even a big number. It's it's a very small number, a billion dollars. So do you think gold is going to rise this year to where Jim Rickards is saying? He's saying that we're going to be hitting, what, 50,000 worth of gold. Do you think because of what's happening with Deutsche Bank, what's happening today with China and everything that's coming down the road here, do you think we're going to be heading to that area? Jim Rickards uses a formula, and this is a formula Jim Sinclair used. I've written about it. Uh, he uses a numerator denominator formula where he takes uh, either money supply or debt and divides it by gold that the U.S. has. So he's, he comes up with a number between ten and $50,000. The problem, the, the, the big mistake in, in his argument is that he assumes the U.S. has 8,300 tons. I assume they don't. Mm. And I assume they don't because they've not done an audit since, I think, 1955 or 1956. And if you had it, why wouldn't you audit it? You can't, you can't use the excuse, oh, it's too expensive to audit. That's, that doesn't cut it. No, it doesn't. I mean, they have enough money to do a lot of other things, <laughs> uh, and they have no problem exactly. spending the money. I mean, it's, that's a ridiculous statement in itself. Yeah, now, I think that is the hook in uh, in Jim Rickards' argument. I, I think he had he has a lot of probably ninety five percent of what he says. I agree with, and I, I think is definitely supportable. But I think that's really the big hook is that the U.S. has has the gold. Um, we're go I think we're going to find out some, probably this year. I think we're going to find out that the U.S. does not have the gold because I think China's, even though many, several people have said that they believe that China was going to do a gold backed yuan today, mm -hmm. 
I don't think that's going to be the case. I think it'll be, uh, it could be in two weeks, two months. I think they're going to allow the marketplace to take gold higher and then they come out with a gold back yuan. And when they do that, they'll come out with a, with some audited numbers. They'll say, we have 20,000 tons of gold or whatever the number happens to be. And I think, in my opinion, they have an absolute minimum of 20,000 tons of gold. And I think they're going to come out and say, we've shown you ours. Now you show us yours. And it'll have to be an independent audit. It can't be, uh, it can't be an internal audit that just says, trust us. Because right. that's what this is about. This is about trust. The, the U.S. has run the world on trust for what, 50, 60, 70 years. And we've, we've uh, abrogated the trust. Yeah, and I don't think anyone really trusts the U.S. right now at this point. Uh, they want to see the proof. Let's just get into the economy. The last time we spoke, it was back in uh, December, and the market was coming down. January, the market came down. February, and then all of a sudden, we have this boost up of the market. Uh, of course, all over the corporate media, they're telling us, oh, look, it's above 18,000 points now. Right. Uh, what has happened since December to now? Um, David Stockman says we're in a dead cat bounce at this point. W what do you think? I wouldn't even call it a dead cat bounce. I would call it uh, this is the, the markets are being jammed with derivatives. The markets since December, if you look at the first quarter of the year, earnings have declined. Everything has declined. Trade has declined. The economies all over the world and in the United States have gotten softer and softer and softer. Uh, in an effort to hold the system together, the, if you want to call it the plunge protection team, has bounced the stock market at the same time the ESF has been gobbling up uh, treasuries that have been sold. And speaking of treasuries, uh, one of the one of the big events in the last couple of weeks has been uh, the Saudis threatening to sell $750 billion worth of treasuries if the 28 pages are released and if they're, uh, if it's inferred that they were behind 9-11 or a part of 9-11. I just, I want to say on, on that specifically, Selling 750 billion, if people think about that and go, oh my gosh, 750 billion dollars, that'll just destroy the system. Well, no, it won't. It truly won't because the Fed could step up, the ESF could step up and just gobble that up and you wouldn't even see one or two basis point move higher in treasuries. You've got to go one step further. What does that mean? That would mean the Saudis are saying the petrodollar is done. We're no longer going to be uh, funneling dollars back into treasuries. Not only that, we're no longer even going to accept dollars for oil. We're going to accept yuan. And probably China would become their biggest customer. So that, that would uh, create the monkey do, monkey see, or monkey see, monkey do scenario where other countries follow the leader and the dollar is the dollar would become less and less accepted for oil and that creates less demand for dollars and and you'll see a huge collapse in the dollar so you're saying it has begun yeah i believe it has where the middle eastern countries they're moving away saudi arabia maybe qatar is next maybe well saudi arabia has made this threat and Obama has already backed down. He backed down yesterday saying that he would veto any bill, uh, any, any bill that, that made Saudi Arabia, that would allow these 28 pages to come out and allow the families of the victims of 9-11 to sue Saudi Arabia directly. Uh, basically what he's doing there is he's, he's choosing uh, foreign policy choosing the Saudi Arabia over the American people. But 
it's it's obviously it's all obviously already come to to uh, to s not serious blows, but there there are punches back and forth here, where Saudi Arabia, in their own mind, is got one foot out the door. We know a couple days ago the Fed called an emergency meeting, and it was with right. finance ministers. We know the president was involved. What do you think that was all about? The expedited meeting last Monday, in my opinion, had to do it had to do with all of what we're talking about, but I think uh, possibly specifically it had to do with Heta uh, Bank in Austria that was bailed in, and there were three Italian banks that were on the verge of collapse last week. So that could have been uh, you know, back policy or backroom policy trying to figure out how to not let the derivatives time bomb blow up. And the following day, you had a, uh, a meeting between Yellen, Obama, and Biden. And then the day after that, there were G20 ministers from all over the world in Washington. And last Thursday, I believe there was a, uh, uh, meeting of the Joint Chiefs of Staff regarding the Donald Cook being buzzed again and the reconnaissance plane that had uh, a Russian fighter do barrel rolls over it. Now, where, where does the Fed go at this point? I mean, we see a lot of things breaking down. The economy, the, the economic indicators, you know, like retail, GDP, corporate earnings, they do not look good right now. So what does the Fed do at this point? How much can they, how long can they keep this going? Tongue in cheek, I would say they should pump because <laughs> they, there, there is, there is nothing that the Fed can do from here. The only thing they can do is print. And I think that's what you're seeing. Uh, you're, you're starting to see gold and silver move higher. You're starting to see the whiff of inflation because the Fed cannot tighten. I mean, they tightened once, and you saw the reaction in January, end of December, January, February. Uh, there's no possibility to tighten. The only thing they can do is lower rates, go to negative rates, and print, print, print. That's, that's their only option. So behind closed doors, my guess is the only decision is who and where do we give the money to? Now, the Remember, Dave, they did lend out 16, secretly lend out $16 trillion in 2008, early 2009. Right. It was not discovered until 2010. So what, what prevents them from doing, you know, another 32 trillion or 64 trillion or whatever? Nothing, nothing. I mean, they, they can do whatever they want. I mean, <laughs> exactly. And Dave, I want to, uh, Go back just a little bit to the okay. Saudi, the Saudi thing. The, the ESF, the Fed, they can buy those sold treasuries. But what they can't do is if foreigners are selling dollars and pushing the value of the dollar down on international markets, they can't buy dollars by printing more dollars. Mm. They would either have to do that with foreign reserves or gold. They, we don't have a lot of foreign reserves. We have very little in the way of foreign reserves. And the thought was, why should we? Because we were the reserve currency. As far as the gold is concerned, I, I firmly believe that, that our gold has been, uh, mobilized over the last 10, 15, 20 years to suppress the price. And most of that is gone. So trying to support the dollar is what that's the Achilles heel. That's what the Fed cannot do. Now, the, there, there are rumors that the Fed is, they, they, they were talking about creating more of this currency and handing it directly to the people. Well, oh, yeah. Know. That's, I, I saw that yesterday or the day before. Helicopter money. Right. Yeah. That basically, uh, that's basically printing money. That's outright helicopter drop monetization. I mean, do you, th do you think people are going to take the money and, and, and go spend it? Or do you think they're going to keep it and hold on to it? If they actually did this, I'm, would this well, actually help? 
if they actually do it, uh, yeah, I think a lot of people will spend the money. It's obviously inflationary. Anybody who saved the money is an idiot because you're saving something that's going to go to zero. If it's free, what's it worth? Mm. True. I mean, really, that's, that's the whole, that's, that's the entire argument between fiat currency and gold and silver. Gold and silver, it takes real capital, real labor, real machinery to dig gold and silver out of the ground. It costs money to make, to, to create that and, and, and turn it into usable form. It doesn't cost anything to create dollars. It doesn't cost anything to create euros, yen, pounds, whatever. They're just keystrokes on a computer. They're worthless. And that's, that's what this is all about. It's real money versus fake money. And this is the end game. This, these are the end days of the current system. We're in April. And many people are saying, oh, it, things are rapidly falling apart. And I don't know if we're going to make it to October or maybe even before that. Uh, I mean, if we're talking about China coming online with the yuan, maybe it's going to be back with uh, gold. We see that gold now is continually moving up since December. I think it's up, what, $200 or so at this point. And it seems like they were trying to suppress it, but they just can't bring it back to where it was. And we're seeing corporate earnings. They're, it's a disaster. Uh, the whole thing's a complete disaster. And everything else that we're looking at is not looking good. So where is the economy going? I mean, what... What is going to happen next here? This is the end game. And I've, I've said all along, I believe the end game will be a, a collapse of the derivatives edifice. Derivatives have been used to price markets. They've been, a, they've been used to suppress markets, levitate markets. And the real economy itself is shrinking. The real economy spits off cash flow, so to speak. And that cash flow is declining because the economies are declining. The amount of debt, the amount of derivatives that the real economies must support have only gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. So we're getting to the point where the debt service, the, the collateral, the margin is not big enough to hold up the financial system. So while we're watching the real economy contract, I think you're going to see a, a point in time, and I'm not so sure we're going to get to October. Um, I could see an unwind happen. You get a failure somewhere, and, and I've said many times, you get a, a, a big enough failure somewhere, and you'll see the entire system close within 48 hours. Wow. So, I mean, at the same time that this is happening uh, out in the Middle East and uh, in the Baltic Sea, and you just mentioned that the Joint Chiefs, they had a, a meeting um, about the, the Russian plane coming very close to the USS Donald Cook. How does all of this fit in? Why are we seeing these events occur out in this area? And why is the U.S. screaming and yelling about all of this? Do they have a plan? Well, my my opinion, uh, and I'm I'm not a, a military guy. Mm -hmm. but my opinion, if you remember, two years ago the Donald Cook was buzzed. Yes. And stories came out that their electronics, all their electronics, were shut down. My opinion is, it was just done again. If you recall, two years ago, mainstream press didn't even mention the Donald Cook. No. This, this time around, the Donald Cook was mentioned, and so was, not just mentioned, but you saw it pretty widely throughout mainstream media. Uh, and also the reconnaissance plane, that, that was covered by the mainstream media. If I had to guess, my guess is this was, was Russia more or less putting a shot across the bow and maybe a test by them. Maybe it worked. Maybe it didn't work. I mean, I have no idea. Uh, but my guess is 
if they truly do have the, the, had the technology to shut down the Donald Cook, either they tried to do it again, it worked, it didn't work, but it basically was, uh, in your face from Russia to the United States. They know that our military is weakening. I mean, we're spending less on it. Uh, even, even the military themselves say we can't fight a two front war now. That is true. And, and I also read something that the Marine Corps, half of the, a third of their. I saw. You saw I this. Yeah, yeah. Only, only one third is functional, I think. Yeah. So. Of the aircraft. Yeah. So this is, this does not look good. And it, it seems at this point that from my perspective is that Russia is continually trying to push peace in the Middle East and the U.S. is kind of on the other side trying to still reach their goal of removing Assad. And I don't know where this is going to end up later well, on. Dave, Dave, the U.S. is more than kind of on the other side. The U.S. <laughs> has been trying to start a war for a couple of years. And I've, I've written this several times that my opinion is the U.S. is trying to start a war so that they can blame the financial collapse on it as, as cover. In other words, our policy, they will say our policies were working, but if, and if it wasn't for this war, we'd be fine. But because of the war, you know, thing, this happened, that happened, the banks failed, whatever. So, and, and yes, it, it, it does appear to me that Russia slash China are trying to uh, stand their ground and avoid war. But this is about strength and weakness. And I, I, I believe that the, the back and forth is China uh, from a financial standpoint, Russia from a military standpoint, showing, hey, we're standing here. We're strong. They're strong, and the U.S. is getting weaker and weaker. Right, and that's a, we're getting weaker and weaker as a function of we carry too much debt. We overspend every single year. Uh, I mean, it's it's ridiculous. If it were not for zero or a quarter percent interest rates, if it was not for interest rates dropping to where they are right now, if rates were seven eight percent. We wouldn't be able to pay the interest on the debt. We're all talking about the economy completely falling apart, most likely this year. Do you think, in conjunction with that, do you think they will create some type of an event false flag? Say, hey, it wasn't us. It wasn't the central bank. Obama, it wasn't me. It was because of another group country that did it. All I'll say on that is based on past history, I think that's pretty obvious. And Dave, uh, you keep mentioning the economy falling apart. Mm -hmm. Please understand that, that when, when you say the economy falling apart, that is, it's the economy collapsing is going to be about credit not being available to the system. When credit ceases when credit is not available to the system, distribution breaks down. And your weekly trip to Walmart is going to cease to exist because there won't be any goods on Walmart shelves. Distribution uses multiple uh, five, six, seven, eight, ten different uh, credit transactions to get the product from raw form into your hands. So all distribution will break down during this time period and people... Well, 